Welcome to Serenity. My name is Sarah and I talk all about tea here. And the tea I'm talking about today is all of David's tea's brand new summer teas. And I mean all of them. I bought one of each. <laughs> I had a whole bunch of leftover gift cards from Christmas, my birthday, and then they ended up having like a flash 25% off sale. Plus, I had a whole bunch of rewards that were about to expire, so I thought there was no time like the present to try all their brand new summer teas. I wanna jump right into this because I'm gonna smell each one as they are all completely brand new to me. I have nothing in here that I've owned or tasted before, so that is pretty exciting. There we go. I miss the days when I could open the boxes and say, beautifully packaged as usual. Nope, not anymore. They're all about the business now. First one up, a returning tea, but one I never got the chance to try. Orange Dream Sokol. This is a rooibos blend. From my understanding, it has turmeric in it. Yes, it does. So don't use this in one of your plastic tea steepers because you will get a stained orange tea steeper. It's kind of like teeth. You don't want yellow or orange ones. Let's see what this smells like. Oh my goodness. Okay, it smells like an orange dreamsicle. I don't know if they still exist or not because I don't typically go for popsicles anymore now that I'm an adult, but they used to have orange yogurty ones, the ones that were like creamy. I'm pretty sure they were called orange creamsicles. This smells like that. See if you can see into the bag. Very, very large pieces in there. Big chunks of orange. And it smells delicious. One down. Happy with this one so far. I'm just gonna stack them behind me on my little table that you can't see. Next one, maracuja mango. I love mango teas. I wonder what this one will be like. It does have sweet blackberry leaves in it, which can be a hit or miss for me, so we'll see. It's got the standard delicious tropical fruits like mango and pineapple, but we'll see about the sweet blackberry leaf. I won't know until I try it, but it gives like a lingering aftertaste to me sometimes. Very mango-y. Mango, pineapple, some really, really tropical smells going on here. You can see there's a lot of black tea in there. You can see some marigold petals or whatever they use, blossoms, I'm not sure. Mm, that smells like a win. I feel like this one will be a really, really good iced tea. Maybe I can make a tea pop with it with my mango buble. Two for two so far. Next one, I'm pretty sure this one is a brand new tea and it is pink papaya dice. Now, a fruit infusion with candied papaya. I wonder what it will be like. Ooh, that is fun. Okay, what is that purple thing in there? Purple sweet potato. Okay, I did not realize this had purple sweet potato in it. It smells really good. Very sweet, very fruity. The smell is slightly unfamiliar to me, so I'm assuming I'm smelling papaya, but you gotta see this. Oh my goodness, I hope it comes across in camera. Do you see how purple that is? That is very, very purpley in there. I wonder if it's gonna steep up like Maui Madness does. I love the color that tea steeps, but I'm not like the biggest fan of the flavor. It's a little bit too mild mannered for me. I'm gonna try this one iced and hot, I think. Now this next one here is one of the ones I was most excited for. There's two in here that I was really stoked about, and this is one of them. And it is Strawberry Kiwi Capri, a white tea by David's Tea. Kiwi is one of my very, very favorite fruits. I actually have some in my fridge right now. They're in season, that makes me happy. And when I see a kiwi tea, I get excited. <sighs> Maybe I could use some of my kiwis to do like muddled kiwi and muddled strawberry in like a cocktail or something. Let's see what this smells like. Oh my goodness. It smells like strawberry kiwi candies. It's just like yummy. Ooh. Okay, that is, <laughs> my mouth is watering. That is living up to the smell that I was hoping it would be. You can see in there, there's like some sugar crystals, a whole bunch of different fruit. Yum, yum. Okay, I'm assuming this one's gonna be a win based on the smell. Okay, this one here, it's got sea berries in it, which I actually grow sea berry bushes. They're very, very large, almost hedge-like bushes with long skinny leaves, and you need boys and girls. If you don't have a boy, you'll get no berries, which is kind of funny to me. But my boy one died, I thought, and then all of a sudden, this spring, up popped some new shoots out of the stump. So I'm hoping it'll be enough to pollinate my female. 
Sea berries taste like really, really, really tart oranges in a way, and I'm pretty sure they have an insanely high percentage of vitamin C in them. Let's see if Nordic berry smells good. Oh, it's pretty. What's in there? Oh, that looks like cranberry pieces. Am I right? Yep, cranberry slices. It smells good. It smells citrusy, berry-y. Hmm, I think I'm gonna like this. It smells like it would go good with like a splash of cranberry juice and a splash of lemonade. I was thinking maybe it might be somewhat like Seaberry Spa. I love that one. I'm down to my last bag, so that's gonna be sad to lose because that's one that I picked out with my mom. It smells different than Seaberry Spa. It smells good though. Nordic Berry, a fruit infusion. Next one. This one is a returning tea, and I grabbed it because I read some positive reviews online. I'm not 100% if I will like it or not. I remember going in store and smelling it and being like, no, but that was near the very beginning of my tea journey. My understanding and appreciation of flavor profiles has really changed. For example, I used to hate Earl Grey's. I thought they were weird and gross, and now I love them. They're one of my main ones I reach for in the mornings now aside from my puers, but queen of tarts, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a tart tea. It smells fruity and tart, <laughs> just as described. I think this one will be nice. It's a gyuza. I thought it was mate. I'm gonna have to look up what that is. I don't even know if I said that right. Gyuza, organic gyuza. Hmm. By the color of the bag, I thought it was a yerba mate, but apparently not. Always fun to explore a brand new type of tea. That's fun. Okay, I said there was two I was excited about. I lied. There's three. I just remembered this one. <laughs> and it is whipped coconut, a green tea. This one has a lot of really fun ingredients. It's got roasted rice, which can be hit or miss for a lot of people. I like it in certain ways. Coconut chips, coconut rasp, white chocolate. I love white chocolate in tea, even though it makes a weird film on your tea. Doesn't matter, worth it for the white chocolate. And popped rice, so sounds like a fun one. I have not found a coconut tea I love as much as coconut cream pie yet, and I'm hoping with the addition of white chocolate in this, it'll be somewhere in that family. I mean, nothing can be coconut cream pie, but hopefully this will be a close second. Okay, I see the little popped rice here. Hmm, that smells really good. I mean, it doesn't smell like coconut cream pie, but it smells very coconutty and smooth and sweet and white chocolatey. See, you can see the little like popped kernels in there. Kind of fun. Smells good. I would say probably my second place so far. Strawberry Kiwi Capri is still holding number one based on smell alone. Next one. This one I thought would be fun for summer cocktails. Wild raspberry. I'm interested to see how this compares to frozen raspberry, which I have quite a bit of picture packs for that still. They went on to like an epic markdown. I think you've seen a lot of my unboxings. I didn't air them all. I might someday, but they're all starting to get pretty old because after everything that happened, I kind of froze in time and couldn't edit or do anything. So I'll probably still release them anyways because watching unboxings is still fun, even though a lot of the teas are not available anymore. More. But this one has raspberry and rose petals in it. That should be kind of fun. Let's see, green tea base. I always like the light flavor of green tea, even though you do have to be careful with your steep time when it comes to green tea leaves and your temperature, very important. I've ruined many a good cup of green tea by putting it on the counter and forgetting it and then coming back to find it extremely bitter. So be very careful about that. Hmm. I smell the raspberry, that's for sure. That comes through very strong. Not as strong as like frozen raspberry, which is extremely fruity. You can drink that as a juice. You don't even have to add anything to it. You can just cold steep it and drink it as juice. This smells nice though. See if you can see in there. You can see the tea leaves. There's quite a bit of tea in this one. And a few little rose petals, dried raspberries as well. As I mentioned earlier, I have gotten really into Earl Grey's, and while this is not an authentic Earl Grey, because it is an herbal, this is Easter Earl Grey. So I think they chose that name because of the bergamot oil in it. Kind of an interesting choice of a name for an herbal, since typically that's associated with black tea. Although I'm pretty sure they have a rooibos Earl Grey, if I remember correctly. I mean, I know most of Davis teas, but every now and then they get one by me. I'm like, where'd that come from? I don't remember seeing that. Hmm. I smell a whole lot of citrus and I smell the bergamot. Interesting, a lot of stuff in there. Oh, they have white chocolate. I mean, how can you really go wrong? 
see if you can see a lot of like elements to that tea. I've heard good things about this online, so even though it's not a black tea and it won't be replacing any of my morning teas, I thought it was worth trying. Add it to my Earl Grey collection. <sighs> yeah, we're getting through this. Still a lot left. This one here, I guess I was a little dishonest when I said this box contained things I've never tried before. Well, not exactly because I haven't actually tried it, but Laura picked me up a tiny little sampler from the store. I just literally haven't made it yet, but the smell was amazing. So I'm like, ah, I probably won't make an order for another while now. <laughs> we'll see if I hold to that. So I should grab a bag and that is very cherry. And does it ever smell cherry? I'm not gonna open this one because as I said, I have a little bag upstairs that she got from store of like 15 or 20 grams. It smells so cherry like everything you dreamed a cherry tea should smell like. I don't know if it tastes that way though. <laughs> we'll see. Next one. Now this one is a black tea base, the Earl's Garden. I chose this because it's Earl Grey with strawberries. I mean, come on, yum. Let's see if it smells good. I've liked quite a few of their Earl Greys. I like their winter Earl Grey with the peppercorns in it that gives you a little bit of heat in your mouth. <laughs> Very big tea. Yeah, that smells really good. You can smell the bergamot. They only have bergamot flavoring though. No bergamot oil in this one, but you can smell it. And you smell the strawberries. It smells really good. I wonder if you can latte this one. I assume you can. I don't see really anything in there that would cause the milk to curdle. I don't know if strawberries make things curdle or not. Does anyone know? I'd like to know that because that smells like it would be really, really delicious with a splash of milk or maybe a splash of strawberry milk, which I have some in the fridge right now. <laughs> this one here, and I don't think I'm gonna say it right, Gianzo, Gianzo, Guanzo, I don't know. I should have Googled that. <laughs> it's a milk oolong at any rate from Fujian province in China. I have just been loving my silver bell oolong, so I thought maybe I like milk oolongs. I never tried them before. That was my first try and it's now one of my most reached for teas. So I thought I'd try another variety and I used the reward on this one because it was a little pricier. It smells more like grassy than my silver bell oolong, so we'll see. I hope I like it. I know it just has like milk flavoring to it. I hope it comes through strong because that's the thing I love about Silver Belt Oolong is the strong milk flavor that one has. So we'll see. I'll give this one a try and let you know. Okay, this one looks kind of fun. Another orange tea, Orangey Glad. Isn't it funny that both of my orange teas are rooibos? It's got oranges and it's got coconut. We'll see how that combo goes. Oh, big coconut rasps. Interesting. It smells good. It smells like kind of similar to Orange Dreamsicle. I'm gonna do a comparison. Hmm. Slightly different, but in the same kind of family. They are relatively similar in smell. All right, still more. I mean, I went a little overkill, I suppose, as is my way. Next one is Hibiscus Lemonade. I love their lemonade blends. I like almost all of them. I can't really think of one that I dislike. Rainbow Lemonade is not in my top favorites, but I still like it. And I have a whole tin of it too because it was on an epic sale. I know they had like this website glitch where they sent a whole bunch of people a whole bunch of free Rainbow Lemonade. So you would make an order and you could add a free tea, but for some reason it just kept adding them. And I went and made an order because people online were saying, oh, when you order this amount of tea, you get this many bags for free. I'm like, oh my gosh, sweet deal. So I went and made an order. Instead of just removing the glitch, they canceled my whole order and never even sent it to me. I was pretty choked because there was a tea on there I really wanted to try. Pretty sure I got it later. But seriously though, you shouldn't cancel people's orders because your website glitched. I don't even know if that's legal. Hmm. Definitely smell hibiscus and definitely smell lemon. This one has beetroot in it, so we should have some really, really nice color to this tea. I really love when teas are a beautiful color. There's something about drinking a pretty tea that just makes it even more fun. Like when there's butterfly pea flower. Oh my goodness, do I ever love a blue tea? <laughs> And another lemon one, we'll stick with the lemon theme, Southern Lemon. This one is black tea and lemon. So very, very simplistic ingredients. This mostly smells like a black tea with a light dusting of lemons. 
Might be a little too mild for me. We'll see what I think when I actually try it. This one, probably my least exciting smell so far. Some are wins, some are like, uh, and some turn out to be wins after you think they're uh, and they end up being, uh. <laughs> Next one is Guava Getaway. This tea has candied pineapple, as many of my new summer teas do. Raisin, rosehip peel, beetroot, so it'll be a nice color. Hibiscus, another color adder. Strawberries, guava. Okay, so there's some fun stuff in here. Most likely going to be yet another pretty tea when you steep it up. Ooh, dark colors. Smells really good. Do you remember Hubba Bubba Bubblegum? <laughs> that was hard to say, Hubba Bubba Bubblegum. This one smells like the pink kind of tropical one they had, or maybe it was red. Oh my goodness, it smells so much like that. Let's see if you can see in the bag. Lots of stuff going on in there, kind of fun. A lot of dark pieces, a lot of pineapple pieces. Wow, that smells just like that bubble gum. Oh my goodness, that's exciting. This next one is a peach tea. Peach pucker, an herbal. My sister's favorite teas lately seem to be peach. At first, she was like all about mango, and now she just loves peach. So I thought this one would be fun for us to try. And we can make tea juice, tea pops, plain iced tea, and I will probably even drink it hot. Let's see what it smells like. Big chunks of stuff in here. Always fun to see. Oh my goodness, smells delicious. Very, very, very peachy. Peaches, pineapples, Mountain Everlasting. What is Mountain Everlasting? That is a Google right there. I wonder what that is. Does anyone know? Do you drink it and then have like everlasting youth or something? Or is it like a mountain that you climb that never ends? Oh my goodness, the little table is getting pretty full back here. This one I almost didn't buy, but I'm like, Sarah, you committed to all the new teas, just grab it. And then I saw one ingredient that made me think, okay, I might like this as a latte. And that was lavender. And the tea is Jessie's tea. One of my very, very favorite latte style teas to drink is lavender infused ones. I love lavender tea lattes, lavender buttercream, lavender swirl. Now that one was the winner. It's discontinued, but I still have like five or six bags left. A bunch of people were really excited to see this one return online. And actually, Alex, who does David's Tea Reviews, just reviewed some of the old blend from who knows how long ago. Someone sent her some and she did a recent review only to find this tea released weeks later. So that was kind of good timing on her part. Oh, I see lots of little chunks of stuff. Looks like coconut. Mm, I don't know about the smell though. It smells more coconutty than lavender. The ingredients are rooibos, honeybush, coconut, lavender, blue corn flour, and natural and artificial coconut cream flavoring. From my understanding, honeybush is a different plant that is like slightly sweeter than rooibos, but the same kind of idea. I don't know if I have any honeybush teas yet. I should check that out. I don't know about this one. Mm. I was a little hesitant, was sold on the lavender, and now I'm not smelling enough lavender to be sure that I made the right decision here. Oh well. Second to last one. This is actually a collaboration with another tea company, a native based, is that correct to say now? I'm like, they always change the politically correct terminology like every five years for everything. So I never know if I've now said something offensive. I'm just gonna go with it. This is for a native owned company called Tea Horse and David's Tea did a collaboration with them. Sounded pretty cool. Indigenous, okay, not native anymore, indigenous now. So sorry, everybody, didn't mean to offend. It's Manumin Maple. I thought the name was really fun. In partnership with Tea Horse, a woman-led indigenous artisanal tea company, we bring you this blend of maple, vanilla, and roasted Manumin, meaning wild rice. It's harvested in the lakes of Northern Canada and packed in a compostable bag. That's awesome. I like this compostable bag. That is cool. This one has wild rice, black tea, maple sugar, and some other fun ingredients. So we'll see. I love maple teas. So I'm assuming I'm gonna love this. And I thought it was really, really cool that David's Tea did a collab. It's nice to see them do something like that. Give a smaller tea company a voice because everyone knows who David's Tea is. I just went and got my hair done yesterday and their entire tea selection was David's Tea. There we go. Hmm, interesting. Very maple-y, that's for sure. Really, really large chunks of blueberries. It smells nice and creamy. 
This smells like it's gonna be really, really, really delicious as a latte. Remove sticker to compost. Oh, that's a lot of work. I'll probably just throw it in my recycling. <sighs> David's tea probably should have done a compostable sticker. I don't know how many people are actually gonna spend time to peel the sticker off, but just a thought there. <laughs> And now for my very last tea, which I was the most excited about and which actually pushed me to make this order. Pistachio Macaron. Yum. I love pistachio teas. One of my very, very favorite teas is pistachio ice cream. It's a black tea base. And that one is next level delicious. I tend to love nutty flavors in tea. I even like nutty granola crunch, which everyone thinks is disgusting but I like it. I will put like hazelnut honey added in to even enhance the nutty flavor. So if there's nuts in tea, I'm just like, oh, that's fun. Okay, let's open up the tea I was most excited about here. I see giant pistachios and a whole lot of color. What's in here? Beetroot, white chocolate, hmm. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. It smells really, really fruity. <laughs> I was expecting it to kind of smell nutty and like a baked good. Although I must admit, I have never actually eaten a macaron. <laughs> I've seen them on a whole lot of baking shows, that's for sure, but I've never actually eaten one. It smells good though, I'm not gonna lie. As I smell it more, I think I'm getting like a little bit of a cakey, cookie kind of smell, but it's way more fruity than I was anticipating. Interesting. Let's see if you can see in here. You can see it's a very, very colorful tea. I was not expecting that. I mean, I should have maybe because macarons are typically very, very colorful. I've always been a little bit nervous to eat that much food coloring though. <laughs> okay, well, I was most excited about this one, but number one place for me is still strawberry kiwi capri smell wise. So we'll see. We'll see what I think about things taste wise later. They have a new tea menu. I wouldn't really call them a tea menu though. It's more like a tea magazine. Pistachio ice cream is coming back. That's exciting, especially since I just told you how much I love it. They're bringing back their unsweetened coconut matcha, if that ever went away. I've never bought it. It's too expensive. Oh, so many teas. Strawberries and cream is relisted, and I thought that one was discontinuing. The Pu'ers, they have coffee Pu'er relisted. That's good. That one was gone for a little while. That's one of my favorites. I love that one in the morning. It's a great replacement for coffee. Organic calming chamomile. I wonder if that one's new. I don't typically drink just plain chamomile teas. I get really tired at night, so I don't usually need help falling asleep. I need help staying awake. Looks like I've got everything, <laughs> everything that I want. Tips on how to make a tea pop. I did mention those quite a bit, that's fun. How to make iced tea, how to make iced tea lemonade. Another thing I mentioned. And they talk about matcha. They talk about how to steep our cold brew collection. I do a lot of cold brews. Although the way I do it though, is I use hot water at first. I'm just worried about bacteria. Then I stick it in the fridge. So it looks like they have some new cold brew teas coming. They have classic lemon, strawberry kiwi, and peach passion fruit. So that will be fun. I don't typically reach for their cold brews until they go on deep markdown, but still fun to have in my collection to reach for here and there. And then they made a fun recipe for Maui Madness. Maybe I'll try that because as I said, I was not 100% impressed with the plain flavor of Maui Madness, but I love the color. So if I can turn it into something amazing, totally gonna do it. Awesome, these are kind of nice. That is it for my tea unboxing, all empty now. I got a whole lot of tea. Let's just pack this away. My dad's gonna be here soon. He's gonna help me do some house repairs. The people that lived here before me, everything they did was like so makeshift. My first week living here, things were like falling off the wall. I'd wake up in the middle of the night to a crash. Oh my gosh, it scared me so bad. And even years later, cause I've been here three years now, things will still randomly fall off the wall if it was something that they put up. I don't know what they did to this place. I think it was like a really, really cheap lipstick renovation just to try to get more money. But man, did I ever whittle them down? <laughs> I could see the lipstick renovation. <laughs> I knew better. Okay, anyways, I got five herbals. Yum. Herbals are always good for summertime. I got three rooibos. Not 100% sure if I should have got all three, but I was committed to trying all the new teas. <laughs> One gyoza. I keep wanting to say like gyoza, but that's food. <laughs> 
I'm probably even saying it incorrectly. So one of these ones, which I thought was gonna be a Yerba Mate, was not. Oh, I lied to you. Six herbals, four green teas, four black teas, including the collaboration with Tea Horse, which, come on, that is a sweet company name. I should go check out their website. One oolong, and the best for last, one white tea, strawberry kiwi capri. Can't wait to try this one, so exciting. So, nice full box now. I'm gonna have to go incorporate this into my tea collection. I just did a massive sort. Everything is all organized now. I have everything put into a spreadsheet so I know what I have of what. And I am almost ready to film my tea collection video. Promise you, that'll happen someday. That's it for my video. I hope you enjoyed this fairly large unboxing of all the new summer teas by David's Tea. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Alrighty.